more so like the state of music, man. Like people don't appreciate good music nowadays, bro. You know how hard it is to come across a classic? The appreciation to this shit ain't the same, bro. People used to wait in line for music. People used to like sacrifice for music. This yeah, shit is so accessible. And even how you said the studio shit, bro, you could just walk into this shit and do it. It's not, it's like not what it was no more. What's up, everybody? This is the Hood Analyst Podcast, where we talk about that real hood shh. And today, it's a very special episode for two reasons. This is the first episode where y'all get to see my hairline. No do-rag. Big mode, got in that mode, and stayed in that mode. Yeah, I do do my own shit. No, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking with y'all. <laughs> but the other special reason is I got two special guests. One is a rapper or artist, and the other is an artist and engineer. I personally wanted to get an engineer's perspective on the hood, the rap scene, and the shorty. So this should be pretty interesting. I'm going to have them uh, um, introduce themselves in a second. But first, like, subscribe. You know we give y'all so much content, so much value, and I'm not begging you guys to support us. We don't do that here. I'm saying... We doing what we doing on our side. Y'all just reciprocate. That's all I'm saying. On TikTok, we drop real, um, whatever the fuck they call it on TikTok. We drop those little short videos every day, multiple. Instagram, we drop multiple reels a day. And the long form content on YouTube drops every Friday at 8 p.m. With that getting, with that being said, let's start the show. I got Noid and Tripped. Noid is going to introduce himself first. Actually, you know what? Never mind. Pause. Tripped is going to introduce himself first and then Noid. And the way the questions are going to go is I'm going to ask Tripped first, then Noid. And then it's a question. if it's a question that I want to answer as well, I will. So Trip, you can introduce yourself. What's going on, people? Thank y'all for having me. My name is Tripp. I'm an artist, songwriter, engineer, executive producer. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just out here doing what I love and making money off it. It's, it's a blessing. Yes, Erski. Yeah, yeah, you already know. That's your boy, Annoyed. Uh, coming out the town, making his music, shooting these videos. Holla at your boy for these videos, too, man. <laughs> Putting myself out there right now. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, that's that's extremely interesting. We got two Renaissance men here. And uh this show should be pretty fun. Let's let's see what we got here. Tripped. Yes, sir. T. What is your favorite? DAW to record in. For the audience out there, DAW is Digital Audio Workspace. Example, Logic, FL Studio, Pro Tools, Tripped. What is your favorite DAW to work with? So I'm very biased. I love I love Pro Tools. I'm Pro Tools certified. I know that shit like the back of my dick. Um, <laughs> you feel me? I just love it. Like the workflow, it helps me. And uh Close second is Logic. I love Logic. Ain't nothing wrong with Logic. I just want to make that known. You feel me? Okay, all right. I've used both as well. I'm going to have to go with Logic. Maybe because I've used it a little bit more. But Pro Tools wasn't bad. Pro Tools wasn't bad. Noid, what made you want to rap? Man, I've been around this my whole life. Simplify my mom. My mom rap. <laughs> my dad rap. Wow. This shit just been around me since like a baby. It's just in your blood. It's in <laughs> yeah. your blood. Like literally. She all right, all right. 16, spinning all always type shit. Got you. Got you. Okay. All right. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Tripped. When in the studio, you know, it can get very crowded with people who actually aren't artists. Yeah. My question to you is, do you enjoy... The small, intimate sessions with maybe one-on-one -on -one with an artist or maybe an artist and a producer? Or do you not mind when an artist comes with a thousand people in his entourage? So it's like, I don't mind if they come deep, but like nine times out of ten, if they come deep, you, you're you not engineering, you babysitting too. Like oh, you gotta, talk you gotta, to them. You got to take care of the studio. You got to make sure nothing break. Like, it's like the... The whole magnitude of like how serious shit get, it just get amplified. So I personally prefer like the one-on-one -on -one intimate sessions because that way you could tell the artist like how you feel like they could come and like something that'll help them and ain't no egos in the way because they ain't no friends like watching it like, oh damn, he just told you to do that. Like, Got you, got you. Okay, all right. That was a very interesting answer. I can relate to that as well. 
Noid, what are your studio essentials? What do you need to bring to the studio with you when you're about to have a session? Some weed. And that's it. That's I'm it. Got my thoughts. Gotcha. Okay. All right. All right. Because I already Super got my shit prepared. I already know what I want. You recorded me before. So it's like I usually come with the lyrics. I know what beat I want to rap over. And it's got you. Efficient. Got you. I, I like that because um, I'm the type of person that hates to be dependent on anything, on a person, on a substance, on a whatever. I just hate to be dependent. So it's good that you only have weed and that's it. I know a lot of artists that need to bring girls, that need to bring their niggas, that need to bring alcohol. It's cool. It sounds like you're going to have a nice workflow because mm-hmm. you only bring one thing and you 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 come and prepare. You sound ready. Okay. Tripped. Is there a difference between recording a rapper and a singer. Yes, hundred percent. You mind elaborating? Yes, sir. So, uh, <clears throat> with a singer, like you really want to make sure like levels and and cadence is very important. Like distance from the microphone and everything, like all that plays a very key factor. With rappers, is like it's very much more like, especially with how rap is going nowadays, it's much more aggressive. So, like it don't really matter. They could get right in front of the mic mm. and put all the emotions in it, and it's still gonna translate. With singing, you got to be very meticulous with like how you record it, how, how far they are from the microphone, how, the level you got them at. Everything is much more delicate when you're recording a singer. Got you. Okay. Well, that, that, was, uh, that was some game for me right there because even though I sound like I was doing it correctly, now it's confirmed from a, a, a professional engineer. When people used to come to my studio to rap, I used to be like, look, it don't matter how close or far you are from the mic. It matters how you deliver the vocals. Mm -hmm. And then when I did singers, it was just instinct for me to be like, you know, sit back a little bit, Mm -hmm. try to project your voice. And you're right. It's it's a little bit more delicate with a singer. Ain't no such thing as wrong though. Okay. Just so you know. All right. All right. Everybody has their own style. You saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always get the two. No way. I don't know if you ever seen Fade to Black by Jay-Z. Uh, it's a documentary and I'll never forget it. It probably came out like 03. It came out when he dropped the black album and this man went in the studio and recorded a whole song in one take on camera during the documentary. And I was blown away. The skill level is definitely not at that level nowadays when we make music. My question to you is, do you record your verses one take? Do you punch in? Do you do both? And do you think the quality of the music is different doing either of those things? Yeah, the quality definitely change if you like do the punch and shit, you know? And like, I try to layer my, my, my tracks, Okay. you know? So it's like, I have like my punch in tracks and then I have my one where I ran through the whole entire thing flawless. Mm. You feel me? So I try to make sure I'm getting every single thing and I'll chop the shit out, you know, like the breaths or whatever. Got to make you. it sound complete because you can hear that. You know? Got you. Yeah, I, I was a huge fan of Lupe when I was growing up. And his breaths used to be like... And it used to destroy the quality for me. And that shit was very annoying. Um, Tripped. Today, you know, we have very different walks of life come into the studio right. since the studio is much more accessible than it was when we were growing up. Right. Have you ever had to kick someone out of the studio? Yes. It was very, uh, I was fucking anxious as a motherfucker when I used to work in Forex MG and Nutley. This is years back. I ain't going to say the artist, but there's someone from the town. They pulled up. We were supposed to bend work. I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be a good session. It's down the third. Mm-hmm. When I tell you this man pulled up with like 30, 40 people, bro. Like literally not everybody fit in the room. We had people in the lounge chilling, waiting. My boss is coming at me like, bro, what the fuck? You got all these people in here. I'm over here about to have a panic attack, not knowing what to do. And um, my buddy uh, Sosa, he was helping me out at the studio at the time. He knew the people. So he helped me like talk them into like trying to reschedule it and like telling them that, you know, he came too deep. 
can't be coming into the studio with fucking 40 people when like six people fit in the room, bro. Yeah, bro. I, I agree with that because like you said, I'm going to use your word too. It, it becomes babysitting. You got to watch all of the equipment now. Mm -hmm. You may know the artist personally, but all these niggas that you came with, nigga, I don't know them exactly. like that. So it, it, it's very annoying and it just destroys the workflow. Mm -hmm. I don't even understand how an artist can create with that much uh chaos. So, um, yeah, I, I, I respect that. And I've had to kick an artist out of the studio, too, before. Not for that very specific reason, but I've had to kick people out, too. Noid. Have you ever had a bad engineer? And if so, what made the experience bad? Yeah. Like, I definitely ran a few up, like, across. But it's like the communication, man. And it's like me as an artist, sometimes like I don't want to have to tell you how to do your job. Mm. You feel me? Mm. So it's just like, I want you to do your part. I'm going to do my part. And that's it. If I got to explain some shit that like, and it, it's frustrating on my part because like, sometimes I can't articulate what I want to say. I'm expecting yeah. you to, to fill so, in those voids, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, once that shit start happening, it, it gets like, you know, a little bit. I got you. Yeah, that, that must be very annoying. I never really had a... Uh too many experiences outside of my own studio. Like I probably went to maybe three or four studios before I dedicated myself to engineering and learning all of that stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to think back. I think I know the situation you were in. Like you were an engineer and you're trying to tell them that you want the voice to come out like this, but yeah, you like, can't say it because you ain't, you don't know reverb and EQ. and time, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so. I, I can understand that. I can understand that. Tripped. What's the best part about mixing and mastering a track? Because, you know, everybody, <laughs> everybody has a different style when it comes to this. And also, most people are either just fans of music or artists themselves. It's a it's a very small few number of engineers out there. So let's get fun. Tell them the fun part of mixing and mastering a track. All right, so literally, well, I'm going to start off by saying music is my life. I would not be here without it. So when I mix and master somebody's track, I think of it as them trusting me with their thoughts and, like, their emotions. So it's like having that honor to be able to put it in a way where I send it back to them and they're proud of what they did. That's what that's what put a smile on my face. Like got you. Got making you. sure that they're happy with what they're making and it translates from how they thought about it in their brain to the track. Got you. Okay. Also, I got another question too. Yeah. Would for for the, for the people out there that's watching tutorials, really trying to learn this, what would be the number one thing that you would tell them to do or learn as an engineer? I'm I'm gonna give mine. I'll give mine after yours. All right. Well, y'all gonna hate me for this because it's gonna sound crazy, but use your ears. Mm. Like that's. It's so fucking crucial. This sounds stupid, but like, like train your ears. Like, like listen to songs that you like. See how they behave on different speakers. Like, that's the that's what really got me in tune with like really understanding frequencies. Like, just listen for real. Trust yourself. Word. That's that's some great advice. It's like you said. It sounds weird, but me being an engineer myself, it's so true. There's no. There's no uh, right or wrong answer. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's all your ears. That's it's all your ears. It. It's not like you could get a level and be like, all right, don't let it go past negative 6 dB. If it goes past negative 6 dB, the song is trapped. Like, mm, nah, exactly. it's, not, it's not like that. And my um, tip to be any aspiring engineers out there, I made the effort to actually understand everything inside the doll. So mm -hmm. if I'm using a compressor, I'm going to master that one compressor that I'm using. I don't go and get a million plugins. It doesn't matter which uh, compressor you're using. It doesn't matter which EQ you're using. It matters how you understand it. Because once you understand that it's too much bass in this guy's voice, all you have to do is go into the EQ and turn down the low end. Mm -hmm. When you have that understanding, then you're going to be wasting, I mean, you're not going to waste as much time sitting there trying to fix the problems. Because that's all engineers do is fixing problems in the recording. Can I elaborate real quick? Of course. So one thing that uh, 
really helped me is like understanding all the terminology. Like for example, like 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 Kamal said, it, it doesn't matter what compressor you use as long as you fully understand it. For example, like understand threshold, understand ratio, yep. understand the difference between slow attack, fast attack, slow release, quick release. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And once you understand that, it don't matter what compressor you're using because you know how to make it work to how you need it. You absolutely. Know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um. Yeah, you you said that better than I ever could have said it. I agree one thousand percent. And it's uh it's tough. Like I said, I know it's probably gonna be some engineers watching this, but all you gotta do is just dedicate at least I say three hours a day to your craft in the beginning at least to really um get your brain just in tune with sitting in front of that computer and mm-hmm. and learning everything. After that. I, it, it becomes second nature. Embrace the mistakes. Ex- oh, yeah. Embrace the mistakes. Embrace the mistakes. Noy. What's up? You are a very skillful rapper. And yeah, I haven't yeah. said that to anybody that has come here yet. There's some rappers that make good songs. There's some rappers that got good energy. There's some rappers that got a good image. You're the first rapper that I will personally say you are skillful. If I was getting on a track with you, I'm going to have to really focus on what I'm saying on the track. Told you. With that being said, with that being said, do you think the world still appreciates a skillful rapper? Hell no. And even I don't, bro. When Jordan Lugers did that freestyle, <laughs> that shit was so hard, bro. But I threw on Saw Baby right after that shit, bro. <laughs> Saw Baby is tough, man. That's- jo- Jordan Lugers is tough, too, but it's just a different era. Saw Baby is one of my favorite rappers. I'm so glad Yo. you said his name. I see. He's That's tough, it, bro. bro. He's tough. That's my... <laughs> and he's skillful, too. It's just in a different way. Mm-hmm. It's just in a different way. I, I, I ask the question that way because usually... When we think of skillful rappers, we're thinking of J. Cole, Nas, like somebody that got unlimited bars and makes it look easy. Yeah, that's a, an aspect of it. But he mentioned Saw Baby. Saw Baby has mastered Bro. his vocals. Like he knows how to make himself sound the, the, exactly how he wants to sound. His ad libs be crazy. Bro, like the shit he be saying, bro, I can't get over it. His metaphors are so simple, but they hit like it. It's like, yeah, he 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 mastered his craft. And um yeah, if if you want to elaborate on why you think that rappers um aren't appreciated for their skill any more than you can. I mean, it's subjective, but like more so like the state of music, man. Like people don't appreciate good music nowadays, bro. You know how hard it is to come across a classic? Like Drake don't got a lot of classics. Talk to him. Drake one mm-hmm. of the best, most dominating rappers right now. Talk but like to him. The appreciation to this shit ain't the same, bro. People used to wait in line for music. People used to, like, sacrifice for music. This yeah, shit man. is so accessible. And even how you said the studio shit, bro, you could just walk into this shit and do it. It's not, it's like not what it was no more. Bro. Absolutely, yeah. It, <laughs> and it, it's, I try to see it as a good thing, but being able to experience how it used to be, it just, it's, I, I'm starting to feel like how my father felt and it's like, damn, like... Yeah, well, I'd never see a dude sell a million in a week like Wayne did. Yeah, <laughs> it's over for that. It's over for that. Um, it's two sides to the coin, though. Yeah, yeah, it's two sides to the coin. It's two sides to the coin. So. Um, it's definitely different. Social media is a tool. The artist has much more power now, so um, you don't have to give away your masters, and there's different ways to do this. You can mm-hmm. go get a line of credit instead of a loan from the label. All of that stuff, I, I definitely support. But it's just as those things grow and become more accessible to the artist, you don't have to worry about the skill as much anymore, man. And I just, I just, as a true lover of music, it's it hurts my soul. It hurts my soul. Um, all right, this is gonna be my last serious question for you, Tripped. I'm okay. trying to think of which one I want to ask you because we have a limited amount of time. How many hours, let me, let me backtrack real quick. Now, when you're an artist or a producer or an engineer, you're going to have to spend lots of time on your craft. But Mm -hmm. I feel like with the engineer, you're going to have to double that because you're in the studio with the artist. They just did eight hours. Then when they leave, you're going to do eight more hours. Mm -hmm. So my question is, how many hours a week would you estimate that you spend in the studio? All right, yeah. Um, 
Let the people know that is not just a one hour and get out and go live your life. You made 200 tracks. I mean, $200 off of this track in one hour. Like, let them know that if they want to do this, they got to really dedicate themselves because it's, it takes a lot. Lie. I ain't going to lie. If you really want to do this shit, you got to be ready to put in 60 plus a week. Like, I'll be doing 60 plus a week on a regular. Like, that's a slow week. I'll be putting in union hours for real. <laughs> but, like, it's, it's all part of the goal. It's all part of the dream. And, like, when I'm in the studio recording other other artists, like, I see that as, like, practice for myself. Like, the artist in me is, is observing, seeing what they're doing, seeing what works, seeing what don't work. So I make it worth my while. And it's, like, it's almost like I'm doubling time because I'm getting both sides of the spectrum's experience. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, as long as you make it work for you, like, I wouldn't say you really have to, have to put in 60, but, like, if you really want to do something with this shit, you got to at least put in, like, 60 a week. Got you. Okay, all right. Noi, so I'm pretty sure you've recorded several tracks with Tripped. Um, you could use him as an example or you could use anybody that you want. From a rapper's perspective, not use, not talking about the doll, not talking about uh, the technicalities. To you, when you walk in the studio, what makes a good engineer to you? Somebody that care. <laughs> they got to give a fuck, bro. They just can't be looking at you like a dollar sign. Mm -hmm. If they look at you like a dollar sign, bro, that shit about, you about to waste the money. You're in the wrong <laughs> spot. Got you. Okay, like, all right, all right. So he has to be at least charismatic. At le like, do you... I fuck the charismatic. Like you gotta care. Like when you when you recorded me, you'd be like, "Yo, bro, that's not it." Got you. Okay, all right. <laughs> Let you things like that. I was just about to ask you: Do you want him to have an input on your track? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, all right. I'm I'm definitely down for criticism. Got you. Constructive criticism. Okay, all right. I think that answer would vary with different rappers because some rappers see it as I'm paying you. I want it to sound like this. Make it sound like this. Don't tell me what to do. But I think that it, a really good self-aware artist would be like, yo, like, you think I delivered this correctly? And mm -hmm. if the engineer can give you feedback, y'all can bounce ideas and all that, I would also say that that makes a good engineer as well. The yeah. engineer has to know how to explain it, too. Like, I've been in other people's sessions where, like, the engineer straight up, like, nigga, that shit was garbage. Do it again. <laughs> like, like that, that, don't, that don't inspire you to do better. You yeah, feel me? Like, yeah. like. A That's better, a better way to word off. it to say the same exact thing is, listen, bro, I think you could do that better. Let's tr let's try it again. You feel me? Isn't that much more like, I bet. You know what? I can do it better. Word, word, word. Okay, got you. Um, That was extremely interesting. I I, I love the fact that uh you guys are a duo and you get, guys came together. It, it was... um. A pleasure to get an engineer on the show because Thank you know you. engineers they they in these music streets too. Mm -hmm. I feel like they don't get as much appreciation as they should. Um, it's usually like artist, rapper, producer, and engineer is all the way down here. Yep. But the Mike Deans, the um, the I'm pretty sure you know more engineers off the top of your head. I can't think of the Alex Gurus, Tume. Alex Tume, Andrew Sweps, Andrew Sweps. We want to say these guys' names because y'all deserve the credit that y'all, y'all, um, for real. Yeah, y'all, y'all deserve the credit for y'all hard work because not even before I became an engineer, I realized that that was the person that I wanted to get cool with when I was rapping because y'all, y'all spend the most hours in the studio out of everybody. And, um, we appreciate you guys. With that being said, it's time to talk about these shorties now. For the first question, I feel like, I don't know, it may be the last time that I ask this question. It may not be, but I just like to get a survey because every man feels differently. Tripped, does body count matter to you on a female? Body. Um, <laughs> personally, it, it it highly depends on what I'm looking for. Okay. Like, if I'm If I'm looking to smash... I'm not even going to even acknowledge or entertain that question. <laughs> you feel me? Because I ain't going to stick around long enough to give a fuck. <laughs> but when it's like someone I'm trying to take serious, like I wouldn't, I don't want to say it matter as long as they just, as long as that body count ain't going up when you with me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like okay, the, right. the past don't matter. Right now matter. Got you. Got you. Know it? Bro, she clean. She straight, bro. Word. Got you. Okay. Show me them results. That's what I care about. Got you. How about okay. the shower? Absolutely. Yeah, yo, that, <laughs> that is a fact right there. Show me those results. 
Heard you, heard yeah, you. I okay. No, no, was- For me personally, I'm not going to say it matters too much, but I'm going to say when I'm looking for somebody that's going to be my girl, I can tell the difference between a girl that has a high body count and a low body count. And I cater more towards the girl that has a low body count. That's that's what I'm going to say. It's, it's different characteristics with a girl that has slept with more men. I think she's harder to get along with. I'll say that. Her level's over 9,000. Yeah, it's over 9,000. Um, tripped. Sir. There's a, there's a, a stere- not a stereotype. There's a preference out there that women have. A lot of women, I'd probably say 90% of them on the planet, prefer to have a man who is taller than them. And that's cool. I'm not knocking nobody's preferences. I'm not that tall, but I can mess with shorties that's shorter than me. Or I could really put the game on, get real smooth, and bag a shorty that's taller than me. It doesn't matter. Um, (laughs) With that being said, that's something that we cannot change. God gave us that height, and that's it. Mm Mm-hmm. I got a question for you about the shorties. Okay. And it's a value, a number value that they can change if they put the work in. Would you ever date a woman that weighs more than you? Oh, man. Um, yes, sir, Ski. This is, this is crazy because I got some shit going on. with. Uh, I, I ain't going to elaborate, but long story short, uh, face is number one most important. Okay. But it's like, if you got too much shit jiggling like I ain't I, I'm not gonna trust myself to keep it serious in bed like I might be hitting that shit I see a jiggle I'm gonna start dying <laughs> you feel me like I'm just yeah. I'm not I, maybe I'm not ready for a big bitch you know what I'm saying but <laughs> like I, I don't mind a little extra like meat on the bone you know what I'm saying but when it's too much meat on the bone then nah I gotta I gotta right. just respectfully just stay away okay alright know it Bro, you see me, bro. I'm little as hell, bro. Like, every girl I deal with damn near bigger than me. Like, <laughs> so hell yeah. Like, what the hell? Like, bring your big ass over here. I don't really give a fuck, bro. I heard you. I heard you. Okay. All right. All right. See, look, the men, at least they being open. That's that's their preference. And it's something that you can change. You can change your weight, ladies. And they still saying that they'll get, date women that are bigger than them. So yeah, just get that bow flex. Yeah, give the give the short niggas a chance. Even though bow neck, like I don't have to tell about. y'all that too much because you know y'all a lot of women give me a chance and I'm not that tall. So, um, but still, all you Amazons out there, try a short nigga. I love it, me a tall. It, bitch, it may though. work. It may what? work. What? Oh, yeah, me too. What? Me too. The only oh thing with the God. tall women is though, I think I said this on the last episode. When they can see you at eye level, they just be ready for the smoke too much. Like, I, uh, that's that's what I don't like. That's why I'll, I like. I'll look up at a bitch like, yo, <laughs> stop playing with me. <laughs> heard you, heard you. Stop playing with me. Okay. This question is, uh, it's a little bit, I couldn't find another way to word it. But as we get into the conversation, let's see what you guys say. Tripped. Can the good qualities of a woman outweigh her bad qualities? Or if it's is a, a certain deal breaker or anything like that, that's like, no matter how good this woman is, I can't fuck with her because she has this bad quality. Yeah, so one bad quality I can't deal with is, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, motherfucking, um, like... Like being being willing to know when they right and wrong, like mm. like you know what I'm saying. Like that's key for me. Like let's say we arguing, you start some shit, and I'm trying to be copacetic with you, not trying to start nothing. But then later you realize you was wrong, and you address that. That's sexy as so. hell. Got you. I agree with that as well, and I also agree with the fact that if a shorty cannot do that, I don't care if she's Alicia Keys. I'm not fucking with you. So mm. that was a great answer. That's probably a bad quality that I just cannot look past. Noy? Yeah, kind of the same shit, but narcissism. That goes mm. with anybody. Mm. Or man, like, I can't fuck with narcissists. Okay, all right, That's yeah. All right, I'm glad you brought up that word. Both of you guys, Trip, you answer first. <sighs> do you think that it's a... What do you think causes the, the narcissism in... We talking about the shorties right now. It's men out there that are narcissists too. Mm-hmm. So don't come at me, ladies. 100%. But for the women, what do you think is causing this such high level of narcissism? Daddy went for milk and never came back. Mm, okay. All right. Okay. 
Like I was talking to you before the shit that we got going against us. This shit so brilliant and immaculate. We don't even know where half the shit come from, but it come from a main source. Raise up your mic a little bit. I heard you, but yeah, yeah. yeah you want me to repeat that? Uh, yeah, you can. So like I said earlier, like the shit that we got against us, you feel me on a day to day, man and woman, bro. Like this shit so immaculate and brilliant. We can't see past it, bro. And yeah. it's like, you can't even see, it revolves around a lot of self. Okay, all right. And a lot of people don't know they self, bro. Mm. How you gonna take accountability? Mm. <laughs> Word, that's a fact, man. That that's who you a, addressing it to. Like. That, yeah, that is a fact. Um, I also think social media plays a part, but what you just said was really, uh, really true. It's like a, I don't, I hate to use the words elites, but the people that are rich, that we don't know got us all on these puppet strings and people that are extremely narcissistic out here don't even realize it because mm-hmm. um that's how they set it up to be and uh it's it's very annoying tripped i'm pretty sure you had some shorties that you were messing with at least once in your life where she had to come to you with the question of what are we so I'm talking about <laughs> situationships. Mm. Mm. Do you think that a situationship could ever turn into a successful relationship? Yeah, no. It depends who you're dealing with. Like, for example, I ain't going to go too deep, but I had a situationship. She wanted more. I wanted less. And, <laughs> and um, it, it just I, j- I was just honest and upfront about it the whole time, and now we like best friends. Like I could hit I could hit that female up about anything, and like she'll answer the phone. Like we, we cool. So it's like as long as you like keep it respectful and like make sure that's like what you looking for is laid out on the table off rip. Then like they can't really be upset. Like got you. Okay. All right. Know it. Where um repeat that question again. Can a situationship turn into a successful relationship. relationship. All right, so cool. Um, yeah, and no, uh, at the same time, like okay. so depending on who you really with, you know. But a lot of the times, as a man, we be knowing what's good for us, but sometimes we don't be wanting to talk to him. <laughs> like, talk to him. You feel me? We be looking at a shorty, be like, "Damn, you right for me," but like, I don't want you. <laughs> okay. And it be crazy. Like, That's a fact, though. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know what it is. I. I'm going to say something that I've always felt and thought for myself. I'd never expressed this in front of other men, but I think when a a shorty is a good girl, like maybe someone that comes off more prude, I just automatically feel like the sex is going to be whack. I don't know if you guys can relate to that. Ah, bro, it'd be them prude hoes that really go crazy. That's true. I've had, I've had it. I've what? had it, but I still got that instinct inside of me. Like I could just look at a shorty that, you know, reveals a little bit more on her clothes and all that. And I'm just thinking in my head, she would top the shit out of me. Nah, but sometimes but, it be them hoes that don't know what they doing. Okay. Though. All right. All right. So, all right. All right. All right. How, how you feel about that noise? Do you think I, my observation is wrong or do you think good girls are usually just good girls or maybe they could be freaks in the sheets too? Like, personally, bro, like, I fuck with a good girl, bro. Me too. It's like, even if they don't know, I could show you. You feel me? I could. I'm pretty sure you don't talk if you whatever the case Absolutely. Is. Absolutely. It could be a little bit annoying, but I've done it. Yeah. You, I, I got patience. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, I, I don't have too much patience when it comes to that because I, I I like some pretty um wild stuff. And if she not... It's my pussy and I need it now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, need, I need tricks and shit. Okay. Okay. So this was the question of the day, but now you guys can elaborate. Tripped, have you ever mixed business with pleasure? Let's say that you was engineering a shorty that was an artist or whatever, and then after the session, you know, something, something. If you have done that, could you give us a little story briefly and vaguely? All right, so boom, long story short, recording this singer girl one day. Her shit was fire. And then, um, so after the session, I sent her the songs. I sent her my number, and she hit me up. We got, we did what it did, and uh, she got 
to Philly for me, mm-hmm. and uh, we just we just couldn't work no more. Okay, would you ever do that again? I would if she know how to handle herself. Okay, all right. So you still are willing to mix business with pleasure. It just has to be with a mature. Yeah, female. because you can mix business business with pleasure as long as the other person not trying to mix it. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you could you could do something like we humans, like we got urges, like we want we want to do shit sometimes. Mm-hmm. So it's like as long as you could act on them urges and then keep pushing back the square one where we was in the beginning, then there ain't no problem. But emotions get in the way, people want more, and that's when it get all. Got you. Okay. Noid, have you ever mixed business with pleasure? No. You feel me? Not in the music, but yeah. looking at jobs and shit, and that showed me not to do that shit. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. So, but because, like, for real, for real, like you said, people, you know, in an ideal world, you just go do this and stick to the script, but shit never stick to the script. Got you, okay. So, you know, uh, it's just best to separate the shit, man, because, like, it's business for a reason. Like, like I don't want to fuck on that what we got going on over here because we ain't our feelings. Got you. I can agree with that. I also do feel like trip sometimes too. Yes, urges and all that, but I got to use the big head over the small head and just be like, yo, it's other girls out here that exactly. I'm not in business with that I could fuck with. I remember I definitely have messed with girls that have come to my studio and uh, they still were cool clients and all of that, but I, it just makes a little bit of things foggy. And then at my first job ever, Kmart, I remember I fucked two girls that worked there, both at work. I fucked them at work. I was a wild nigga when I was younger. And they found out and they basically boycotted me. Everybody at the store hated me, didn't want to talk to me, isolated me because I was messing with two shorties at the same time. So it didn't feel good. I mean, nowadays, I probably really would not give a fuck at all. But younger, I definitely say that I felt ostracized and um, it, it wasn't a good feeling. So that's one of the bad side effects of mixing business with pleasure. It sound, sounded about a bitch that sing though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, always. <laughs> that, Even before I rap, I loved it. I always loved it. That shit, man. The, they, they moan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tripped. This is a very broad question. So you could probably think of the first thing that comes to your head. Okay. What's the most unattractive thing that a woman can do? You could take a second to think if you need to. Be thirsty. Ooh, okay. All right, elaborate. Like, it's like, I, I guess it's like a guy thing, but it's like, there, there's something about like not chasing a bitch, but like, you know, like proving yourself to a bitch that mm-hmm. kind of like, it like ups like your, it ups like your feelings about yourself. You okay. know what I'm saying? Because when it happened, you're like, yeah, I'm that nigga. You Got know what I'm you. saying? But okay. it's like, if a bitch like just off rip, like talking to a bitch and out of nowhere, she sends you news. Like, I'm just like, whoa, like hold the fuck up. Like, <laughs> damn, like that was, that was too soon. Like, yeah, you know what I'm easy. saying? Like, I wasn't even, I don't know. I'm a different type of nigga though. But like, yeah, I just hate when like they, they trying to do too much. Like, damn, I ain't bad. Like, you want to fuck? All right, bet. I, I'm about to find someone else who I got to persuade the fuck. Okay, all right, bet. All right, that it was the chase. Word, that was pretty cool. Um, Noy, how you feel? Do you need me to repeat the question nah, again? Nah, you're good. Got you. I don't like masculine women, bro. Okay, all right, Aggressive elaborate. Women. Aggressive women. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Like, using hella profanity, like, hella obnoxious, like, shit, just be like, you ain't got no, like, self-home training type shit. You ain't got no manners, like... It's why it's, it's a lot of that out here, man. Got you. Call okay. You watch your name unprovoked. It'd be like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, that's probably, I, I'll agree with that's that. That's, that's the number one answer for me. Uh, yeah. It, you, you summed it up with the word masculine, but uh, I'm going to just get a little bit more in detail. I think I say this on a lot of episodes. Don't be, don't question everything that I do. If I say we're going to go here, I already got it planned out how it's going to go. Don't be questioning me. Don't um, be combative. Don't try to start arguments. Mm-hmm. Don't talk out of my name. Don't insult me. All of those things are things that I personally think that a man can kind of get away with because if I'm talking to another man and he insults me, it's hands. But when a woman insults me, it's like, you just got to sit there and take that shit. And it's like, it's not a good feeling. It makes you just want to get the fuck up and leave and never talk to the bitch again. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I agree with that. That masculinity shit, is a dub. Now, I'm going to ask one last question because we coming down to the end of this. 
This question is, uh, I thought of this one because the shorties out there don't understand how men feel about um, this specific subject. So I'm going to give you three answers, ladies, from three different men on what good pussy is. Mm. Tripped. What makes pussy good pussy? I'm 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 gonna just I'm gonna just reference this this young thug bar so y'all get the picture. He said, "I just fucked a cup of water." I did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it gotta be water, like it gotta be water, like when you taste that shit, it tastes like water. It don't it don't taste like pussy. It tastes like water. Like <laughs> nigga, you dive in that shit is water. Okay, all right, all right. Water. Keyword. Water. PH, <laughs> pH on plus plus. Heard you, heard you. Noy. What makes Sad. pussy good pussy? I thought it was three things that make good pussy good pussy, but Okay. Go ahead. But yo, it's no 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 shit. no. I said we're gonna oh. give them my answer, your answer, and your answer. Oh, oh, that I will bet. be three things. Oh, I bet. But if you yeah, got man. three things, you can run I'm through. I'm gonna just say the one, but it's just one thing, bro. And like not every girl be doing it's the Kegels, bro. Mm. Bitch could grip you, bro. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> shit. <laughs> you be feeling like not every girl could do that shit. At least from my experience, not every girl was doing that. I'd be like, God, you got me. Okay. Got all right, all right. I'm stuck. <laughs> okay. So y'all got two answers there. I'm gonna give y'all one final answer. Every remember, every man is different. For me, yes, those two things are definitely a plus. But it comes to a point where you know you get older, you get more experience, and you run through a lot of women. I think the number one thing that makes good pussy good pussy for me is enthusiasm. If you show me that you are willing to do whatever and uh, have a smile on your face, enjoy it, be in the moment, then it don't, it don't, I'm not saying it don't have to be super wet and I'm not saying she don't have to do all of the tricks, but just enthusiasm with me will get you very, very far. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I'm going to say. Reciprocity. Reciprocity, exactly. Reciprocate, reciprocate. I was about to say what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, you got two rappers right here. We, we, we be in the dictionary. We be in the dictionary. Hey, I got to pick up at the stores when I leave here, man. With that being said, this was a remarkable episode. We got a perspective of an engineer. Um, I apologize, Noid. Um, I could have asked you more about the videographer for questions, but I didn't know that you were coming. So yeah, we so will get a videographer up here because they be in the streets in the hood too, recording get all Richie the artists. up here, man. Yeah, we're going to get Richie up here. I spoke to him, but, you know, he he be moving. He yeah, be he around. Be, he be OT a lot. Yeah, he be OT. Me, so um, with that being said, this is the Hood Analyst Podcast where we talk about that real hood I'm going to have the two guests do the, um, their own outros. If y'all want to drop y'all social medias, um, any business, any projects y'all got coming up, Trip, you can go first, and then Noy, you could go next, and then I'll take us out. All right, so boom, boom, boom. TR1PT. Don't forget the T at the end. We trip, but we up now. That's why it's past tense. You feel me? Heard you. I got a new single coming out June 3rd. It's called Circles. Everything been coming full circle, so it's the perfect... Uh, piece I could put out there for y'all could, so y'all can see where exactly I'm at mentally and artistically right now. I appreciate y'all for having me. All right. Most Def, you can follow me on Instagram underscore Noy, N-O-Y-D and my video page is Rimhan, R-I-M dot H-A-N. That's my name backwards. And I got some shit coming out as well. I've been releasing a whole bunch of music. I hope everybody been keeping up with it. Yes, follow yes. me on Spotify, N-O-Y-D Apple Music everywhere. Follow your boy Noy on YouTube. It's just Noy. N O Y D. It's just Noy. Fuck with your boy. Yes, sir. Ski. This is the Hood Endless Podcast where we talk about that real hood. Shh. And y'all already know I got to give the people the famous outro. Men, get your body count up because women will never tell you what the fuck they like in bed. You need to get your experience <laughs> up. It's like Pokemon. Yo, train. I was about to say, oh my God. Train your motherfucking character so you know how to um handle the gym battle. You ain't going to evolve right away. Exactly. But you will. But you will. And women, keep your body count low. And if you can't do that, at least deceive the nigga into thinking that your body count is low. He will take you much more seriously. Hit them kegels. We out. 
crazy. Oh shit, damn. <laughs> it was our grocery. <laughs>